Okay, so this is a sale that started last week and it is continuing this week because there is so much stuff. Most but not all of the books in the Pemmergus Wall will be a dollar. Dig in and find a treasure. There are some very, very goodies. I told myself I wasn't going to go to the books first. So you know what? I'm going to walk along here because I'm such a stinking book whore. Oh my gosh, but I love them. Okay, I will have to come back over here. But I'm going to go look at There's all of these clothes and fabrics and lace and... Okay, I got to go. Hey guys, it's me, Jenny Vintage Soul Crafter, and I'm so sorry to leave you for that like three seconds that it took me to go and um, peruse the, the estate sale that I was at, but... Um, Oh my goodness, I got so overwhelmed by the fact that this is an estate sale that is in its second week and it's like fifth day or something or other and it's still in a warehouse and did you see all of those tables? So, uh, I had to, I, I had to, I had to like cut you off for a few seconds while I looked around. So, I'm just here to share with you uh, what I found at, at said estate sale and um, what was I gonna say? Oh, I'm trying something out. I don't know if this is a good idea. I don't know if it's gonna work. I loved, I watched the rebookery. I watched Gina the other day and she's sitting in her bathroom probably cause that's where the lighting was best or maybe that's where it's the most quiet cause she has a basset hound that barks and you know, when she's trying to make videos and whatever, whatever. Um, I have my Otis, he's right here in front of me and usually he likes to go through everything. You cannot put something down on the floor because Otis thinks it, he needs to inspect it and he sticks his bulldog nose where it don't belong and he sticks his bulldog nose where it don't belong if you know what I'm saying. But, um, but he's a pretty good boy, aren't you, bye-bye. So, okay, I'm gonna show you some of the things that I got. So I didn't go last week when it first started and I thought, you know, I thought maybe I had gotten away with it. But no, no, of course, I get this little feed on my phone that says they're doing it again. So actually, I got this little handmade, cute little Raggedy Ann pillow and Raggedy Andy, who's pushing Raggedy Ann on the swing. I guess it's a day like that that you want to make sure that um, you haven't ticked Raggedy Andy off because, you know, he could get a little carried away there. But anyway, I picked this up from my friend Bonnie. You all know Bonnie by now. And um, stay tuned because on Saturday, Bonnie and I are going to be baking and we're going to be uh, videotaping it. Hopefully Otis doesn't knock this camera over. But if you suddenly, if you see me like fall down like Humpty Dumpty, then you'll know that Otis just knocked the camera over. Uh, he's being a good boy right now. We walked, so hopefully he's got some of his bulldogginess out of his system. Anyway, I got this for Bonnie along with, if I can find her, oh yeah, here she is. Bonnie loves Raggedy Ann. It was her favorite childhood doll. And so if you see this Bonnie before we see each other on Saturday, I got you this. So anyway, we're baking. Bonnie and I are baking. It will be my first baking YouTube video, but it's an old family recipe of Bonnie's. And look at me. I like, I like, look, I did not pay for this at the salon, okay? Um, so we want to have fun because Bonnie is great on video and she is hysterical. And uh, together, I don't know if you'll be able to handle us. But um, anyway, it's a little raggedy Ann. She's a cute little one. And so I got those for Bonnie, my buddy Bonnie. And this light is so freaking bright over here. But in case you haven't been able to tell by now, I am not, you know, trained in these things. I know, hard to believe, huh? Um, okay, so they had the smalls. I don't even, and this isn't it. This is just some stuff I stuck in. No, actually, these are from the smalls. So if you've never been to an estate sale, they always take the smalls or the littles. I call them littles. I think they call them smalls. And they put them in a separate category, a separate area usually. And depending upon who's running the estate sale, they'll walk you through it. Because those are things that are more expensive and that people could easily walk off with. So they kind of escort you through that. Um, I don't typically spend too much time there. I like to go through the junk and the crap and the boxes of things and the tables full of things and flip things over. And, you know, I've shown you at the antique fair the kind of stuff that I like to look at. I, I, I love pretty displays, but I will always go for the things that are just sort of piled and poured out onto a table because usually you're going to get a better deal. 
So uh, I got some of these little corsages, you know, in my wreath making, I need it. I was really hoping last week they had, I'm sure, a ton, because this woman was a collector and a dealer herself. And Jenny Krause is the estate sale owner that was running the estate sale. It's just a cute little, cute little deer. And, uh, and so she was good friends with this woman. And they, um, so she, they, the woman died five years ago, actually. Here's another cute little pick, corsage, whatever it is. It's probably a pick, I guess. Maybe it was a corsage. And a, a nice, sweet, old, pink bottle brush wreath. Hopefully I'm close enough. I might be able to pull it in. And then this little box, I just love this little sweet, it's empty, but it actually has the names I don't know who they are. Maybe they were the names of, you know, the the ladies' um, grandchildren or, or whatever. I, I don't even know if this light is helping or making it worse or what. It might go dead. But anyway, it's just an empty box, but I liked it. And I don't even know how much I paid for it. But hold on. I'm going to take a sip of coffee because I haven't had my full afternoon coffee yet. Oh, it's so good. Oh, what? You know coffee when you first wake up in the morning? Like that first sip of good coffee is just, oh my gosh, it's magical, isn't it? It's it's like it's like heaven on earth. It's like heaven knew that we would need coffee in the morning. Maybe that's tea for you, I don't know. For me, it's coffee. Okay, so I got this big old bag of millinery, millinery, mil millinery, mil millinery. Maybe it's millinery. It's spelled kind of, it's spelled like M-I-L-L-I-N-E-R-Y, I believe. Uh, and it's, it's a funny word, but, Basically, these are all, you know, like silk, the types with, they say millin millinery, <laughs> um, that they would stick in hats and things like that. And I don't know if that's what these specifically were for, but that's generally what they were called. And there's actually even a little bit of netting in here. So yeah, so this gal was a dealer herself and she bought a lot of the items that she had along the way from the estate sales that Jenny Krause puts on. Oh, these are so cute. It's a little a little nosegay, a little bouquet of, of violets. And these are fantastic for paper crafts. Oh, that one's that one is not really old, but that's okay. Not terribly old anyway. But you can see that a lot of them are made out of, um, Otis loves the smell of old as much as his mama does. Huh, baby? You can see him. He's getting up in here. Um, but they're, they have this lovely kind of faded quality, silky, and some of the pieces are this sort of flocked, uh, I don't know if they're actually really velvet. Those of you who know your fabrics, the seamstresses and whatnot, um, could, could tell me what that is actually made of. I, I do think some of them, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, are silk. Oh, this is lovely. This is a little, uh, looks like another little pansy. Um, I thought maybe it was a sweet pea. This one looks like a sweet pea folded up. And again, it's got that velvet or crushed velvet or, uh, or just velour, whatever it is. I'm not really sure. If you know, please comment because I would like to know what that is. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so she, Jenny Krause is the person who put it on and, and the woman passed away five years ago, but the family only just decided that they were ready to part with the things that for whatever reason, you know, they hadn't been ready to part with before or they needed, they needed that amount of time. It would not surprise me. There was so much stuff. They needed that amount of time to go through everything. So, and yeah, this sale, they were still pulling things out of boxes. I mean, it, you saw, if you saw the beginning of the video, the warehouse that this, this was in. Oh my, I, I look a freaking wreck, but um, I'm not fixing myself now. I already started. I'm going to keep on going and I've pretty much almost given up on editing these darn videos because it's such a pain in the arse. So, uh, yeah, so this is a bag full of those kinds of things, which are really fun for all kinds of crafting, paper crafting, mixed media, altered art toward sort of things, which I love to do. There were table, table upon table upon table of, um, of like baby doll clothes and things like that. So I, I didn't, I didn't really peruse any of those. I did peruse, like there were tables just with lace poured out all over them. So of course, <laughs> I, I, I'm like a moth to a flame, you know, Jenny to lace. Um, and so, yeah, I, I picked some things up that I wasn't really sure if I was going to come back to it or not. And 
uh, I did, and you saw when I first walked in that I stepped away from the, the, um, oh, this smells like old, again, that, how do I describe that? It's like the combination of rose water, a musty sort of smell, but not a bad musty smell. Um, um, mothballs maybe, but not mothballs, like that knock you over kind of ammonia smell. You guys know the smell, but oh gosh, to me it's just, it's just like family, not that my family smells old, that's not what I mean, but it's just a nice, I don't know. It's just a nostalgic, sweet, vintage smell. I love it. So I got this uh, like tablecloth that is this um, dude. It was so in my head earlier today as I was looking around because there was a lot of it. Uh, I'll think I'll remember what it is, and I will. Oh look, isn't that pretty? I will remember what it's called. It's got to do with fish nets, I believe. When I did my research, originated out of like. Netherlands, Sweden, that area, Nordic sort of, um, yeah, I, I will, I will remember and I know somebody will comment and remind me, but I can't, I can't think of it right off the top of my head right now because I woke up early and I was on the go really early and all of that good stuff. And probably the whole time I was looking around because I saw a lot of it, uh, the type of, um, the type of lace it is because it's not necessarily crochet so oh my gosh I can't I can't this this video would be so so long for me to go through just the pile of lace I dumped into my into my bag but here's a real pretty table runner I mean all of this stuff is fabulous for repurposing for junk journals travelers notebook journals textile art I'm not sure typically when I list things in my Etsy shop I measure them and um, I love these little pieces like this because I just use little bits and bits and bits and you know add them to paper and tags that I make for when people purchase from my Etsy shop. Um, normally when I put things in my Etsy shop I, I measure them all out and I group them you know similar laces together and so forth but this is so much that I don't I don't I don't anticipate doing that because I will never get it all listed. And uh, so, yeah, I will probably do these in batches and it'll kind of be a little bit of a mystery lace batch bag. Some of it, not all of it. I, th I think this is just, and honestly to me, when it has, when I, when I list something in my shop and I say that it has these little like drippy coffee stains, you know, on it and it, and it just makes it lovelier to me. I mean it, it, I, I love that. I, I think it just is so quaint and charming and um, this, this piece is just got lovely, all kinds of little nodding, you know, the little, I don't know, do you call those crochet knots? Somebody, somebody told me this. So too much information, you guys, for, for my middle-aged brain to remember all the names of everything. I haven't been doing it long enough, but I will share with you. Those of you that know crochet and all of that, if I can find it, it's somewhere in here. I did find this book that has all of the various different types of crochet and what they're called. And I thought, oh, somebody's gonna be so proud of me. Um, one of the things that I wanna, it's, it's in here somewhere. One of the things that I wanna share with you, okay, so like, look, this bag is full of, of lace, lace of various sizes. Here's a, a nice, you know, um, card full of lace, uh, fascinating trims. I don't know if this is the original thing. It says lace remnants of undetermined fiber content. I don't know what's that, I don't know what that means. And then somebody must have been selling like these. I just thought that this was really cute and sweet at some point. Um, tea Party Grandmas out of Lodi. I think this lady maybe lived in Lodi. And it's just a little doily with sweet, sweet, sweet little buttons all sewn to it. And then it has a little pin backing. But I just thought that would be so cute. And a little junk journal on the front of a junk journal or something. Yeah, I mean, this is this is lace. And typically what happens is I, I just start stuffing things in my bag. And I'm like, oh, I can always change my mind. 
At Goodwill, I do a lot because it's all in my cart and I have to check out, you know, but in a place like this, they bundle things. And so you get up there with all of your stuff and your goodies and it's just like, um, okay, whatever. Yeah. Give me a price and they give you a price and you, you know, okay. And I did actually, there were some books that I did put back that were old books. So this is just like this wad of lace and trim that, um, that was sitting there and, and I picked it up. Yeah. It's just, you know, I'll have to sort through that cute little hanky frilly little lacy hanky uh i would really like to find a, a a lot of hankies i bid on one uh at, on etsy i mean not etsy ebay but um they were they ended up going too high eh, a little bit of rick rack can you have too much rick rack probably but i don't yet um one lady said, oh yeah, I'm the one that has all the buttons. Well, not all the buttons, but a lot of buttons, but I did not see any more buttons. And I just thought, darn it, you know? Uh, nice, big, long length of lovely lace trim. And then I did find this big, nice skein of very pretty lace trim. And it's a, it's a pretty good wad. It's a pretty solid thing of it. And then I'm looking through my bag of goodies here. I found lots of like um, embroidery, needle needlework type of uh, bits and paces with this one with a little pretty little lace trim. And so I picked those up. A lot of this bag has just various different types of fabrics. Um, there were gobs and this one lady was totally, totally commandeering and hoarding I love like little baby, so since she had all these baby dolls, she had like little baby doll quilt blankets. I love these. They're just so sweet. Anything kind of small and miniature, um, I'm all over that. Um, so she did have a bunch of quilting squares and I found miscellaneous ones here and there, or what, what quilting pieces, you know, but there was this one gal where most of them were and she was just like, she was just putting them and going through each and every one and it was a table full and I thought well I'll, and I told her I said I'll come back when you're done but I looked over several times and she was never done so <laughs> I never got back over there and she was going through it all to see what was handmade and what was you know machine made and so forth and so on and this actually wouldn't this be cute as a as a little like feather tree Christmas tree skirt Ooh, I might not be able to let this go on a tinsel tree. Oh, that would be so, so sweet. It needs to be ironed, obviously, but um, maybe somebody can comment if they have a secret for me about ironing. I, I think my iron just is kind of a sucky, not so great iron, uh, and, I, and it doesn't get hot enough because even after I wash things, like, uh, you know, I, I don't wash lace, but I do wash fabric pieces and stuff on a gentle cycle and even after that when the starch has been washed out of them the doilies and things they still just um th they just the wrinkles just don't come out of them well Cody boy you can come up over here buddy come over here baby sorry excuse us for a moment here so if you know how I probably just need to get a better iron here's some more like different different cross stitch. I have a bunch of other stuff. Uh, um, cross stitch and embroidery and needlework. I'm just going to call it needlework because not all of it's cross stitch, not all of it's embroidery, not all of it's needlepoint. And again, uh, I have a tablecloth similar to this that I have not listed yet. Um, and I just, I love these. I just think it's so, this one, again, every, probably everything I got has some kind of stains unless there was some new fabric. Um, but I just think this is so, I don't know, there's something about this that's really, really appealing to me. The way that that is, uh, is, is that crocheted? It doesn't, it's not crochet, I don't think. I'll have to look in my book when I find it and pull it out to find out what that is and what the other one, what that other one is. Darn it, it's going to bug me. Like I said, I thought about it all day because I saw so much of it. The one that's like the squares and it always has a picture like that one that I was pulling out and showing you that has has the roses, the, um, the flowers. Actually, those look like sunflowers. Here's another little sweet, sweet baby quilt. Oh my gosh, baby doll quilt. So adorable. 
This would be a cute little burp cloth, actually. I mean, if you were really, really into vintage, um, I was into it. My, my good friend, a, a teenage high school friend, told me my house looked like a museum one time when she came over. I took that as a compliment. But she, um, when my, my kids, when they were babies, I, I was into it. Like, I've always loved vintage, and but not like you know, now, now I probably would like use this as a birth cloth, but maybe I wouldn't, I don't know, it's too cute. So I love this funky fabric. This would be so cool for junk journals. Um, a lot of this will be listed in my, my Etsy shop. I have other fabrics and I've just been waiting to list them until I have more of them. Um, so yeah. This is, this kind of reminds me of like a Swedish tablecloth, you know, Scandinavian sort of, and that's where that lace again originates out of. Oh, that's just going to drive me crazy. Okay. There were gobs of these. So I just started picking up these little like collar lace collar pieces. And, um, I mean, you know, does it go like this? Yeah, like this. I mean, there's gobs of them. And again, these are so useful for various different types of textile, art, traveler's notebook, journal covers, traveler's uh, junk journals, mixed media, altered art, canvases. I mean, all, on and on it goes. So I'm getting to the bottom of this bag. And here's another like wad of wad of lace that again I'm not I'm just not going to be able to go through every single piece as much as I would like to because otherwise we will be here for ever and I don't even know how long have I been going already 20 minutes okay so more little fat I, I think these ones that have the little ladies on them are just adorable uh, Valentine's Day fabric lovely just in time yes 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 already thinking about valentine's day before i had a shop i wouldn't be but now i am that will definitely be listed in the etsy shop and more fabrics and some other i got some other um because i can use these in the wreaths and you know for various different they had these um these were not in the little section the smalls these were just on the table so i picked up a few of these and oh only a couple of little mini many um mercury christmas balls for my wreaths but oh well uh now i have to like make room and kind of shove this all back in here just a little bit so i can move on um okay pardon me excuse me there we go now what i want to show you this is another bag full of fabric they had some oh gina oh gina at the rebookery look at this uh, grooviness this is like bark cloth i think it kind of has that texture i don't know that it's it's i'm sure it's not genuine bark cloth but o m to the g to the m to the g to the m look at this look at this i love this this was uh, a curtain was it a curtain or was this a, oh my gosh, this was, oh, this is a skirt, oh my word, it is a hand sewn, machine sewn, handmade, homemade skirt, I'm going to try, I, you know how bad I want to try this on right now, do you have any idea, I, oh my Oh, okay. All right. I am going, I am, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, you guys. I am trying this on. Before I lost a lot of weight, I never, I probably would have gotten one leg in here, but oh, oh my gosh. It's a little, it's actually a little big, but it has little belt loops. That's what gave it away. I thought maybe it was a curtain at first, but um, oh, Oh, okay, I'll just, I won't make you sit through me taking it off. All right, anyway, this is a whole bag full of fabric. Uh, this 
is something that I've been wanting. I did find some, some reindeer, some plastic reindeer uh, that were here and there smattered around. So I picked, I picked those up as well for my, my wreaths. Um, stick those over there. This one, this one kind of is like a wobble head. Ooh, ooh. His little antler is broken, but that's all right because deer shed their antlers anyway. So it's kind of a normal process for him, but he's got a little head bobbing thing going on there. Love that. Um, okay. I am so excited. I have seen these and I've seen other like, you know, vintage dealers and stuff like that. And I've seen them at the antique uh, fair for sale, but they're always so expensive and it makes me so annoyed that I didn't keep our son's Tonka trucks and things like that. But I have been wanting one for planting in or for decorating for Christmas. And I saw this one in the pictures that they posted of the estate sale and I got it. It was still on the table. One of the other ones was gone, but I dig this one because it's not like the you know, the kind of newer ones that were like bigger. And now I think for the most part, they're plastic. So I'm, I'm super excited about this. Needs to be cleaned off, but I will either put succulents in the back. Oh my gosh, look, it like dumps. Or uh, a Christmas tree hooked onto it and Christmas stuff. I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm happy about this. So roll that little puppy out of the way. Um, and then I got, oh, there's that crochet book. Hangers. When it comes to baby stuff, little children things, and all that kind of stuff, I mean, these are so darn cute. Little, I'll probably give some of these to Bonnie because she has a little granddaughter, a little circus scene, another little circus scene on those, and that's little sheepy lambs. Um, super, super cute. More lambs, let's see, there's some blue ones in here. Get them untangled. That one has little lambs too. I promise they're not all little lambs, but a lot of them were. This one's like a, a lime green, that lovely, not lime green, you know, that jadeite kind of green and has little choo-choo trains with little smiley faces on it. Oh, it's so cute. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, a lot of them do have the sheep on there, but that's okay. And then this one's, oh my gosh, tangled up. I can't get it untangled. It's, it's cow jumping over the moon. And I probably did pay too much for these, but again, I was out there, I was done. Like, can you see the cow jumping over the moon? So sweet for little children's clothes, for little doll clothes, for, you know, so sweet. So I, you just don't see those kinds of things. And that's, that's, the, that's the thing, it's like, I don't, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with these, but I love them, they're sweet, and I, I'm not going to walk away from them and leave them there because I would be thinking about them, I know, and I can figure out what I'm going to do with them. Okay, this is what I'm excited about because this is the book. Can you see that? Uh, old and new designs in crochet work. Some people have to put glasses on in order to see close up. I have to take my glasses off in order to see close up. I just came back from a walk, so I'm kind of sweaty too besides being blown over my hair and everything. Um, this is copyright 1913. So... What that means is everything in this book I can uh, digitize and, um, and make available on my Etsy shop or share or whatever. Okay, so this is filet crochet. That's what it's called, filet crochet. Filet, see I was thinking like fish's fishnet because filet, right? Um, this is filet crochet, old and new designs in crochet work. Filet crochet, an ancient art, began about the time that hunger prompted a fisherman to weave the first net, the general plan of which was patterned after a spider's web. The good wife shortly thereafter appropriated the fishnet idea, of course she did, and began to apply her crochet work to it. Ah! Oh my gosh. And so look, there are just, you know, several pages. It's not very big, but um, dude, I, I was pretty freaking excited about this because not only A, can I digitize it, but B, I can educate myself. So I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked about, about this sweet little, this sweet little fine. I mean, thing is falling apart and it deserves to be digitized because it's not going to last in that condition. Um, I got some other books. This adorable, adorable night before Christmas hankies. I don't, Okay, so, oh, okay, so this was filled with hankies. 
some of these things I didn't even, I'm just like, oh, that's just too cute. I'm just getting it. I don't even know. Um, but it was filled with hankies. There's these little like places where hankies would be. How interesting is that? I'm going to have to take a closer look at this. This is 1941. Again, I don't have time to go through all the books either. Um, oh, so I'm just going to kind of take a peek here and, and see what I can pull out of here to share with you guys. This is kind of cool. This is a good housekeeping from August 1953. It, I wasn't like in search of it, but it has fantastic advertisements in there. Uh, oh my gosh, Bing Crosby. See the new Gibson. Yes. I would love to have a stove or oven like that. I know it's probably totally not even um, practical at all cutesy cutesy children's room decor but that's not what I was going after what I was going after was this Sears catalog humongo Sears catalog I contemplated not getting this I had a bed just like this only mine had blue gingham and it it, it had the canopy I was totally into the canopy girly girly stuff just funny because I was a I was a tomboy for a good portion of my life. I just didn't want to deal with the girl stuff. But this is a 1976 Sears Spring Summer catalog. And it has some so groovy, groovy images in it. Advertising. I mean, the... <laughs> you see these shorts? Uh... And, oh, 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 yes. Oh, oh, Bonnie, I bet you had a pair of pants just like that. Oh, I bet you did. Oh, my gosh. So stinking fun. Lingerie, you know, I mean, oh, mm-hmm, yes. Am I speaking anybody's language here? Uh, am I speaking anybody's language here? So, yeah, it's, it's kind of disgusting, but, um grungified but but too good too good so that's gonna have to take apart these just spoke to me these are adorable little um wooden slate chalkboards double-sided chalkboards these would be so cool actually they're made in portugal that's kind of interesting i don't know how old these are if they are really very old at all but they have an old kind of quality look to them and, and i think they would be um like I hope someday maybe at some point I'll rent a space like in the local the local antique place and uh, and so maybe you know it would be good like for writing writing on and whatnot um, and then boxes you know my obsession with boxes if you've watched any of my antique treasure hunting things and never met a box that I didn't feel the need and compulsion to open this one's a little tricky um, it does it does latch, but it's a little tricky. And inside of here are lots and lots. I found peel and stick Raggedy Ann and Andy gift tags. They're not that old, 1998, but I thought of Bonnie when I saw those. I don't know if she'll want them or not. And then this little box has all kinds of sweetie cutie cards, postcards, a lot of which... I will be able to digitize because they are old enough. This is a Hallmark one, not that old, but some of them, there are some postcards in here that um, are postmarked. So 1922. So those will be able to be digitized. I do have plans for digitizing a bunch of things next, next year. can only do so much at one time. This is December 25th, 1912. Christmas postcard. Super cute. And this I thought was fun. Um, they had bins, like just bins of ephemera just tossed into, you know, that I was digging through. So this is 1963, so not crazy old, but a couple years older than me. And it's a little calendar of pages, and I think it's really sweet. So anyway, this, this um, oh, many, many happy returns. Oh, so cute. This actually has a date on it. It's maybe 30... 1939 or 
1949 or 59, might be 1959, I'll have to look that up. I still have it memorized. I used to know how to read Roman numerals when I was a much younger gal. I thought this was really sweet and this would be fun for a Christmas type junk journal. Um, it's an old 45, Santa Claus is coming to town, plus jolly old St. Nicholas, but it doesn't have the 45 in it. It's just the Peter Pan players. It's just the, um, the folder, the, you know, sleeve, the record sleeve envelope. Anyhow, I thought it would be really cute in like a junk journal type of thing, so I picked that up. And yeah, that is, um, that little, that little box is full of stuff. And then there's a bunch of other like, um, these like paper doll type things that aren't crazy old. They're from like the 1980s and, and, uh, bits and pieces like that. And so I picked, I picked those up because those are fun. Uh, and then I have this whole faithful blue bag that I have right here and um, it is filled do you see this I can't hardly even lift. it's filled with books so aren't you glad that I, I didn't go to the book section right away because um, this probably would have been twice as full and yeah, but the books were like a dollar or less. A couple of them were more, like I said, that I put back. That um, in the end, they just didn't have. They just weren't, you know. Uh, this is a seriously, seriously old golden book. There probably were gobs of golden books last week, and I missed them. It's written in a little bit. This is a 1947, and I do believe it is. It is the letter G. So in some of my Etsy shops, excuse me, my nose is like gonna run down all over the place. Uh, this is, so it has little Marsha Jones. It's probably the one who decided that she needed to trace over all of these. Little Marsha was an artist in training and she wrote her name there. And yes, she, of course she wrote her name up here too. Probably not the original owner, but uh, she was marking her territory nonetheless. So uh, in on my Etsy shop, I have found a link um, for, and I, and I, if you're interested, well, if you're not interested, you don't have to link on it, but I'll go ahead and find the link again, because it's really fascinating if you're into little golden books, because it, it's a great article. There's several of them out there, but I like this one the best. It was the clearest about how to age little golden books, how to tell if they're first edition, second edition, so forth and so on. And so one of the ways there, there's lots of ways to do it. There's various different no one no one language for aging uh, little golden books but one of the ways depending upon what decade they were and and what and you know what year they were published and so forth is there's a letter uh, or a number in the back on the back page so this is a G so whatever letter G is in the alphabet a B C D E F G seven number seven somebody probably could have pulled that right out of their head but not me I can't uh, this is number seven so this is this is a number seven edition of a 1947 book. So this is the first year that the book was published. Fix it, please. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Um, Eloise Wilkin. I was going to say this has got to be Eloise Wilkin, who did so many of the little golden books and her illustrations. The, the, um, the God, you know, my little golden book about God. She did that one and so many of the other ones. Absolutely precious. Boy, little Marsha. Little Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. You were a busy little pencil bee, weren't you? She needed to go through all... I bet you she played school with this like I did. I had date stamp and I would date stamp inside my books. Oh, and I meant to also tell you, if you have a Raggedy Ann or your kids do, um, don't let them cut their hair. Mm -mm, not a good idea. I cut my Raggedy Ann's hair and guess what? She has a big old bald, bald spot. I'll pull her out one of these days. You know what this Raggedy Ann doesn't have is the little heart. That's interesting, huh? Mine had a heart too, and I used red lipstick and I performed heart surgery on her. I don't know why I did that. I would pierce my doll's ears too with little pins, but you know, that probably if you've, if you've you know, tuned in with me a little bit here and there, probably doesn't surprise you very much that I would do something like that. Um, I love old, the old school books like this, you know, storybooks, readers that teach, teach little ones how to read. I grew up on these myself, so I love these. Um, 
A lot of them were deemed politically incorrect and taken out of the school systems. I find a lot of the California school books, former school books in Goodwill and places because they were, this is 1954, because they were deemed politically incorrect. Um, you know, there's a lot that could be said about all that, but... Uh, and there, um, there's definitely some things where we could stand to be a little bit more sensitive, but I think we need to be careful when we start taking books out of schools and, you know, and, and places where they, anywho, I won't go into all that. Uh, I don't want to offend anybody. and It's not my purpose and my point of being here. Uh, when you were very young, this is an A.A. A. Milne. So, oh gosh, it's got the cutest little book plate in it. So this is, you know, by the author who wrote Winnie the Pooh, and it's got all different... All different cute. I just saw the author and I'm like, okay, I gotta get this. Uh, I didn't even look in it, see if there was any pictures or anything. Um, it's a bunch of poems. And I'm trying to find real quick, if I can, the publishing date. Um, 1948, looks like. That's when this one says. So, yeah, cute little stories. You guys, I can't go through this whole book. Um, I, I will be going through it. And if I find, I found a bunch of these little, uh, these were laying in the wrong place, these little Ram Nally tiny elf books, and they're in, they're in some kind of rough shape, but uh, again, you know, these are great for die cuts, using your punch, and punching them out, and using them for tags, using them for collage, using them for embellishment, so yeah, these are super cute. Um, and I have, let's see, there's at least this one, uh, Merry Children. So you can probably tell by looking at this that this can be digitized and it has, this was given um, on, for Christmas 1892 and this sucker is, I mean, it, it, it's like crumbling, honestly. I maybe shouldn't have gotten this. It's like seriously crumbling, but I, I am going to try to because these are these would be good for people that do like to do digital art and stuff like that to um, to digitize. Yeah, I probably maybe shouldn't have got that, but anyway, okay. I, I have to finish because I gotta put all this stuff in my garage and um, and do something else. I don't know, sort through it, get some stuff listed on Etsy so that my house doesn't get taken over by by things and and nobody can find me because nobody wants that. I certainly don't want that. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you liked what you saw and um, you'll go estate sale hunting with me again or perusing or sharing or looking through or visit my Etsy shop or something. Okay, thanks. Bye.